Well, we first we need to understand that uh, government that issues its own currency really doesn't need tax revenue in order to spend. It doesn't have to first receive taxes before it spends because it spends its currency into existence. And actually, logically, we need the spending before the population has the currency in order to pay the taxes. So taxes in a um, sovereign currency nation serve a different purpose. They're not actually the source of the government's um, financial ability to spend. They actually create a demand for the government's currency so that the government can spend the currency into existence. In other words, without the tax system, the population wouldn't necessarily want the government's currency. So the government would, wouldn't be able to buy labor or products. Uh, by issuing its currency unless the population wanted the currency first. So the, the taxes create a demand for the currency. So if the government wants to spend more, let's say to alleviate poverty, it wants to hire unemployed workers to give them a job and to give them income, it doesn't need taxes in order to do that. If the government wants to improve the equality of the distribution of income by increasing the income going to the poor, it doesn't need to take from the rich so that it can afford to give to the poor. Now, it may well be a good idea to take from the rich, but there's no reason to link in our minds taking from the rich to give to the poor, uh, as Robin Hood used to do. Uh, because the government doesn't need the taxes of the rich in order to spend on the poor. I think that uh, politically it's actually a bad idea to uh, always link these two because if the uh, raising taxes on higher income people is politically unpopular and perhaps politically not feasible because of the power of the rich, then you ha have made it virtually impossible to spend on the poor. So uh, I support both policies, but I support them separately. Let's tax the rich because they're too rich. That is a, for me, that's a justifiable approach to say the rich have too much income. It gives them too much power. It gives them uh, too great of an access over society's resources. It can uh, promote excessive consumption. It can lead to destruction of the environment, so let's reduce their income. Uh, by the same token, I support spending more on the poor to eliminate poverty, to eliminate unemployment. Um, we should pursue both policies, but pursue them separately. There's no reason to link the two. It's been common wisdom that the way to reduce excessive um, riches is to tax them away. I think that uh, in the real world in which we live, this is not a very efficient way to reduce um, excessive uh, inequality uh, where the, the top 1% or top one-tenth of 1% one uh, have such a huge share of income and wealth. The reason is because, uh, first, once they've achieved extremely high income, uh, they have the power to influence politicians to fight against raising taxes on themselves. And second, they have the power uh, and the means to hide their income uh, in offshore tax havens, for example. Uh, and with the modern, uh, virtually free flow of capital, it's very hard to stop um, them from moving their, uh, their sources of income offshore and uh, concealing their income and wealth uh, in these tax havens. So I think a more effective strategy is to prevent excessive income and excessive wealth, you know, more or less at the source, uh, w how they are earning their income and wealth. So I would pursue that strategy. Uh, there's no reason why 
the CEO of a corporation um, should have had uh, his income uh, explode relative to the average income of the workers of the corporation from say 10 or 20 times uh, the average income to hundreds and hundreds of times the average income of the employees of the corporations. This can be prevented. Um, it varies greatly across nations. Uh, the ratio is much higher in the United States than it is in Japan, for example. There's nothing, this is not due to market forces. This is due to um, the institutional arrangements in particular countries, and institutional arrangements can be changed. So I would prevent them from earning the high income in the first place. That's the best way to uh, reduce the growing inequality of income and wealth. One of the ways that the, um, the top management of corporations has increased their uh, income relative to the average income in the corporations is through stock options. And um, what this not only increases inequality, it um, affects the way that the corporations are run. Uh, with stock options, the uh, top executives of corporations have a huge incentive to pump up the value of stocks. And this is not in the interests of the economy or even necessarily in the interest of the shareholders of the corporation because it um, pushes on the corporation a very short-term time horizon. The, the management will try to do something that will uh, uh, pump up stock prices in the short run. They exercise their options. They can sell the, the options at, at a huge profit. And then we find out that there was actually no reason for the stock price to be uh, pumped up. Um, so pump and dump is what we call it. Uh, this has been a, a major source of the rising inequality. It's not in the interest of the corporations. and in, in fact, often it can leave the, the corporations pursuing extremely poor strategies in terms of uh, long-term uh, planning uh, and uh, even destroy the corporation so that they go bankrupt. And uh, these top uh, management walk away with uh, huge rewards from something that actually destroyed the corporation they were in charge of. This is uh, bad throughout the corporate sector. It's especially bad in uh, financial institutions. Um, and the reason is because what we saw in the run-up to the global financial crisis uh, that began in 2007, for the decade previous to that, the, the management of the top financial institutions in the world actually had been engaged in massive frauds that uh, allowed them to pump and dump and walk away from uh, financial firms that uh, had to be bailed out by governments all over the world. So this was um, uh, not only increasing uh, inequality massively, it also was um, leaving uh, economies in crisis that required government rescues, which uh, was behind the uh, EMU's uh, crisis of uh, so-called sovereign debt crisis, which actually was mostly due to what the financial institutions had been doing.